Thanks, everyone. Uh, and first of all, uh, welcome again to uh, our Similia Twitter Spaces weekly event. And uh, we continue after, again, a successful Lisbon and a community vote on the coming Similia airdrop. Um, if you are in the Similia community, we thank you uh, for having your voices heard. Um, and if you're not sure um, or you're not participating yet in the Similia community, please get over to community. Dot sommelier dot finance. Uh, governance is is alive and well. Uh, we've had about uh, two proposals um, voted on in the past. We have um, we're looking to see more proposals come. And I think uh, what folks will be inspired of is is this chat um, and uh, the uh, uh, you know the, the things that uh, we're trying to think about in the NFT space. So um, good morning all. The title of our Twitter space today is exploring NFT sellers. And what we wanted to do is more like, a, you know, one of the things that came up um, in, in uh, our discussion with Sommelier is that we did have, for the early folks, if you remember, we, we, we did the first NFT drops on Sommelier, which were wine bottles, um, way back in, you know, the first quarter of 2021, uh, January through March, um, select Sommelier community members got really very nice bottles of wine for participating in pairings. Um, and participating on our, our Uniswap B3, our Uniswap app. And then, of course, Uniswap B3 came, and then we moved out of wine bottles, and, and then we did a small experiment with art. Um, there were three NFTs given to liquidity providers on Sommelier. And that inspiration, and, and of course, now the, you know, sort of popularity, growing importance of NFTs in the space has led us to ask some more questions. Um, you know, how, you know, would NFTs look like on Sommelier? And I invited... Um, all of our folks who are currently exploring NFT, you know, items in, in the crypto space, particularly in the Simile team, to talk about it. And so, Kevin, since you're here, you might as you know, I'm going to, you know, sort of say, hey, put you in the spot. But Zucky, um, you know, let's jump in. I think maybe one of the first questions I would have to talk about Simile and NFTs is what, you know, what ideas do we think of when we think of Simile, liquidity management, and then when we think of NFTs? And... Um, I think, you know, one of the things, you know, that is coming up is sommelier sellers are essentially NFT managers because they are managing liquidity or the movement of, um, you know, liquidity on Uniswap V3, which is represented by NFTs. But if we start looking broader, um, you know, the questions I have of what inspirations do we have? And I think maybe um, I might start with Zucky. Zucky, do you have inspirational thoughts that come to mind when you think of sommelier and NFTs? Um, the general point that I have is NFT Phi is, I think, likely to become like likely to become an interesting, more and more interesting space. Um, there's a lot of value in NFTs. There's a lot of trading activity, um, and Sommelier is sort of exists as a as as a tool to like sort of automate and accelerate that kind of activity. And so, I, you know, I've been very interested in sort of exploration around these things. And, you know, I guess maybe my question is, you know, as we think of sommelier managing and moving NFTs in Uniswap V3, do you think that model extends to, you know, different types of NFTs outside of, you know, sort of uh, that Uniswap V3 range order design? Um, do you think where Sommelier is at is a long distance or a far distance for us to explore NFTs further? Um, or, you know, is there a lot of work, you know, sort of, you know, for different ways or different uh, different design spaces? You know, do we have a lot of work ahead of us? I keep, I, I keep thinking maybe we don't, but I thought maybe you might have an idea of saying, you know, what, if, you know, what your thoughts would be there. Do we have a lot of work ahead of us? Well, um, it's a tough question, but... Maybe I'm trying to say is, you know, where we are within managing NFTs on Uniswap V3, does that make an easier path for us to explore the NFT space? Maybe that's the question. No. Got it. That, I, I disagree with mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that what we are doing with NFTs in, uh, 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 in uh, like, the NFT management we do for Uniswap V3 is just an abstraction. Um, like the generalized NFT market is very, very different. Uh, and the bulk of the NFT market is very different from Uniswap uh, liquidity NFTs. Got it. Got it. 
So when you think NFTs, so then, okay, so if I were to ask, hey, what would be a cool idea that Samilia might work on for NFTs or in the NFT space? Um, uh, I think the question I would have is, um, are there ideas currently active in the space that we might, or the community might consider interesting to look at? Um, Kevin's supposed to jump in here and say, yeah, yeah, dude, there's this cool stuff. <laughs> I'm happy to. So here, here are some of the ideas that come to my mind as someone who collects and owns and is probably over allocated to <laughs> NFTs, which is that, you know, just like the original NFT, which is basically, you know, something that gives you pride of ownership, but is useless in every way. Um, I think the earliest like thing to think about the NFT before NFT was Bitcoin, right? It's great. Um, you buy it because it has perceived value and because it's cool to have it. Um, for 90% of the world, it's completely useless. Um, what is same thing for even Ethereum up until probably, uh, you know, 2017, 2018. What makes these assets interesting, what made Ethereum what it is today, what made, you know, what's now making kind of Bitcoin more interesting is the you know, ability to use it more than just as an asset that stays idle, but to use it in something like DeFi or to, you know, generate yield. So, you know, um, NFTs are today where Ethereum um, and, you know, all the coins that exist on Ethereum are in 2017. They're cool to have. They go up in value on a speculative basis, but they're pretty useless. Um, so what is kind of going on right now what i have a desire for us on a personal level what i'm seeing other teams start building are ways to make them useful um they're good collateral so there are a lot of things we could do at smellier that um you know kind of hits upon that point and helps us build towards a world where your nft um is something you can take out stable coins or eth against um, you could stake your NFT and generate yield. Um, there, are, there are a lot of solutions going on right now. And, you know, I think some of our advantages are like the things we can do on sommelier um, can happen in a way where there are lower transaction costs. Um, we get the power of the, you know, decentralized validator set to kind of make the decisions about how to generate yield with like a basket of NFTs. And then everybody who, you know, threw all their ETH and the JPEGs over the summer and now has, you know, quote unquote, new liquidity can actually start using those NFTs in productive ways. So that's kind of the vision I think, you know, Sommelier can start building towards over the next few weeks. Awesome. All right. So let me reflect on that a little bit because you said quite a bit. And thanks for jumping yeah. in there. All right. So if, you know, if I were to imagine your vision, in, you know, in the in a in a in a possible future world, Samilia is uh, really protocol is really good at um, you know sending transactions um, from one chain or messages from one chain to control what's happening on Ethereum or any EVM. So if I have um, a bunch of NFTs that aren't doing anything but maybe super valuable and I'm I'm not willing to sell them. Maybe uh, there could be some sort of uh, sommelier seller, which would be uh, a contract that would be managed by the sommelier validator set that could maybe uh, lend or, or, or allow me to finance my, this basket of NFTs, maybe you know, mine and others, so that um, uh, capital can then become efficient, go to work make money and then uh, come back to me as a, you know, one SOM token holder, as well as a, a JPEG owner. Um, and I can continue to make profits and still keep my, you know, and have my collateral secure that lending. This is one of the ways, is, is that how I would sort of break down that vision that you were sharing? Yeah. So let's say this, I give you my crypto punk, you use an NFT lending protocol built by somebody else to collateralize that. Right. Um, then with that, those loan proceeds, you give, uh, you know, 
you you generate yield with those yield loan proceeds. So maybe you pay twelve percent for the loan, and the seller figures out a way to make twenty percent. And then we, uh, me, as the o- ultimate owner of that crypto punk, make eight yeah. percent on my crypto punk. That's awesome. That that is awesome. So. So, you know, I think are folks currently doing this type of lend, you know, lending in this space, and and is it a fast growing area from what you've seen? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, I am good friends. I've been writing the smart contracts for a team that's built an NFT lending protocol. I've seen Nifty Fi popping off. I have, um, you know, been a lender on Nifty Fi. Uh, JPEG right now is another protocol that's getting a lot of hype that allows you to get yield off your crypto punks. I think you're going to see a lot of like, you know, crypto punk board ape farming type yeah. things going into yeah. Q1. So it's definitely popping up. That is awesome. That is awesome. Um, I think uh, th- so, given where we are with Samilia and given what your awareness of the protocol, um, I'm going to ask you the same question as Lucky um, a bit you know, um, how much distance or, you know, how much effort do you think would be required for, you know, the Simulator Protocol to explore this this particular space of lending and, and collateralization in your mind? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think a significant amount. I think the things we can do is maybe, you know, start, you know, talking to the teams that have done some of these things already, yeah. especially yeah. the kind of lending protocols and figure out how we yeah. can plug into them. Yeah. Um, you know, on the, you know, on the gravity bridge, um, handling NFTs is another kind of step we're going to need to take. I yeah. think it's inevitable the way kind of, you know, asset distribution is happening now with so much money in NFTs. Um, but, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, years away. Maybe right. it's yeah, a yeah. Q1 thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um and 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 exciting that it's uh you know something that uh, again uh Samili can can sort of embrace. Mario, I think you were mentioning some folks that were reaching out to Samili um and the types of partners that might make up this. Do you do you have those guys in mind again that you so, can share with us? I think that, like the biggest I, Hold on. I want to I want to jump yeah, in. Jump and in. Talk about yeah, go for like, it. Yeah. What I view as the elephant in the room of all this like NFT lending <laughs> stuff, which is like this is you know the the va- like the value of NFTs as 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 collateral, right? If we want if we want to make NFTs into productive assets, we have to be able to value them as collateral. Um, and the question and like the the question is is like there's a lot of room for sort of information manipulation uh, in the NFT market. Um, and the, that it, when you start treating NFTs as uh, collateral, that information ma- manipulation becomes like a, essentially like a security vulnerability. Um, and I think that represents like, like probably what I think like one of the biggest sort of overall challenges of, um, of like the NFT DeFi market um, is like what kinds of things can you meaningfully like decorate an NFT in to to like manage or mitigate these risks to be able to lend against them? Yeah. So if I could reflect on that, what you're saying is that um, because these things are illiquid, um, it is very hard to to evaluate their real value or or some baseline value. And once you have all these different NFTs from different sets, different folks, different communities, um, it becomes even more difficult to sort of uh, create standards around assessing value. So they become easily, the value becomes easily manipulatable and and that would be a, a, a problem. Is, is that how we should read it or did I get it wrong? Zaki? The, the goal of, you know, the, the goal of of sort of anyone who's attacking an NFT lender is going to be to like show up with an NFT that they know is worth nothing, but create the impression that it's worth a lot. Got it. Got it. And the question is really, how do we how do we figure out uh, 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 
And so, like, NFTs have, like, an enormous amount of potential um, in this, in, 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 you know, in the, in the DeFi space. Uh, but I view that as the sort of existential crisis slash problem around, like, NFT DeFi um, is going yeah. to be, like, hey, if you want to have sort of automation of counterparty risk, um, like, automated counterparties to... Um, to NFT DeFi, um, there needs like you know solving this problem um, becomes like sort of the ess- like essential to the to like sort of building out the the next elements of the space. Got it. Um, you, you know, it's a this a good point. I think a uh, real point that it, it inspires me to ask Joyce if she can speak. I know that Joyce is also exploring NFTs on sommeliers from real artists as a way to, um, you know, anchor back to that questionable value issue. If you have an authentic art piece from an artist, um, you know, can one build this type of, uh, you know, collection that that then can have value? Joyce, are you able to speak to some of the things you're exploring for sommelier NFTs? Yes, sure. I think it's really interesting, like what you are talking about NFT in the DeFi uh, space, but I think it's also important to create new communities around the NFTs. Um, I think will be a great uh, opportunity to engage with the community and hear what they want. We were thinking to contact these real artists. We are having a lot of troubles of what happened uh, between the ERL award with the URL word, how we how we contact, how we create commissions. We have a lot of amazing NFT, but who is the artist who do them? We know, we talk about what is the process, you know? Uh, so I think it's, it's, it's a really interesting word around how we will create a, a platform for real artists for go, coming to the digital world. So, Mike, and thank you, Joyce, for that. That that. So you're talking to real artists. I was going to then say to Zucky, Zucky, if if there was provenance by authentic artists creating these authentic works, um, that was you know part of a sommelier NFT, uh, you know, type of you know. And let's assume these these are authentic artists or or real world artists have some credibility in the real world. Um, is that does that help? sort of address the issue of um, properly evaluating um, the, the the particular content or does not, in your view, does that not really have an impact? No, it, of course it has an impact. This is why, you know, me and everyone else started Providence-based start, blockchain startups back in 2014, right? <laughs> right, I remember those, yes, exactly. Right, like, yeah. it, you know, if you can figure out a way to automate provenance at scale, um, that gives you a lo- that that gives you like a relatively uh, 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 that gives you a starting point um, for um, for 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 you know determining value. But you know something can have authentic provenance and it's still its value can still be wildly manipulable. Good point. Right. Because these still are illiquid. Right. So um, there a, a lot of times there's not like a massive market for these. Um, so now I need to ask Kevin, Kevin, you're playing in the NFT space, in the lending space. How has the industry addressed some of these issues or has it been a limit to growth? Yeah. Um, so I, I'm playing in the lending and the borrowing space, actually. Um, and the, the thing is, so like, you know, right now, you know, I am. I have issued a loan to some, you know, unknown borrower against one of his cryptos, right? Um, the way these platforms work is usually all the ones I've seen work with a um, kind of whitelisted set of allowed um, contracts. So maybe they support crypto punks, board apes, art blocks, cryptos. Um, well, you know, the good thing is that everybody is aware of what the canonical contract addresses are for those NFTs. So, you know, um, on the back end, it's not certain collections that are supported. It's really certain contracts that are supported. So if I were to, you know, mint a board ape on a contract other than the board apes contract, it wouldn't look like a bar board ape to one of these platforms. 
Did I lose you? Yeah, no, I, my, I, dear Twitter, please make a desktop app. My mobile phone timed out while I was listening because I was so enthralled. You were, you were just, it's so cool. So you, so literally you have provenance back on essentially down to the contract level where um, if yep. the contract is the board Apes contract, that is the provenance. And that whitelist only allows, um, you know, sort of tokens or, 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 you know, items from that contract to be considered board Ape for the purpose of lending. I think that's awesome. Um, yep. and, um, and, I, and I'm guessing if, if that, is, that is scalable, right? By definition, um, the authenticity, is, authenticity of the contract generating the, the set is, is how it's done today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, this could theoretically be, you know, different for, say, one of one R, right? Maybe you right. have a piece by, you know, X copy, and you said this X copy piece was very old and was minted on, you know, a different contract than the one he usually uses. Yeah, well, there's yeah, a few yeah. ways, you know, you would be aware of that one. Is it really very old? Yeah, you know, yeah. The chain, yeah. Check the chain, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what if what too, if, you know, what if was a lot of, go ahead i'm sorry I'm doing, i love it I, it's, it's awesome keep going yeah a lot of the prominent artists these days use their own smart contracts so what you've seen is a lot of artists that are creating kind of original crypto art yeah have moved away from kind of the storefront contract so you don't mint on the open sea contract anymore or you don't mint on the foundation contract you know, there's an awesome team. They're called Manifold, and they work with a lot of prominent artists to basically create custom smart contracts that each, um, you know, artist can mint on. What the benefit of this is for the ecosystem, especially like the financialization ecosystem, is that there's now a canonical registry of this artist's work exists at this on-chain address. So, you know, if, if you check the chain, you know... The, these problems, uh, you know, obviously there's social consensus around everybody believes this is yeah. the correct registry, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but these, these yeah. problems are being solved. These problems are being solved. That, uh, so does that make Zucky's I'm eloquent? not trying to argue that these problems are unsolved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, is Zucky's <laughs> elephant that big or is the elephant got small? <laughs> no. Well, the appraisal is still, you know, uh, you know, an issue for illiquid assets. I think forgery is something that, you know, um, like I said, is, is being solved by kind of having these canonical addresses be well known. Um, appraisal, you know, if you have an illiquid asset, like a one of one piece, maybe something that, you know, last sold in 2018 for two Ethereum, um, it's hard to figure out how to, you know, price or appraise that asset. For something like, uh, you know, a CryptoPunk that, you know, exists within a set of 10K and, yeah. you know, they sell every day, it's easier. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. one-time assets are very hard. But, but again, we and, and, and appraisal can be something that can be community-driven, right, where um, you can develop appraisal systems um, just like yeah. we have in, you know, um, DeFi insurance to then say, hey, yep. you, know, um, you know, my appraisals have been valuable you know, and here's the evidence on chain. So, so, yep. so, so there, there's a path to solution. My question is, can this all be done on sommelier? Like, can we have, you know, um, uh, canonical contract issuance be managed by, you know, the sommelier protocol itself, where artists come to sommelier and say, hey, you know, if my art is generated on sommelier, then you know it's genuine. Then you know it's authentic. Um, you know, is, or is that just, you know, can sommelier participate with others in some of these models is maybe my core question. And I'm curious, Kevin, if you think that's possible or, um, you know, there's other lower hanging fruit. I think it's possible. And I think for a lot of people, it's going to end up being more accessible. I mean, the way the, you know, Ethereum chain works these days um, is it, it's, very, it's very congested, right? So yeah. Yeah. if you're an artist that, you know, hasn't sold a bunch of NFTs before, you're looking at, especially if you want to deploy your own contract, maybe a thousand to $1,500 upfront yep. cost. And you don't even know if anything's going to sell. Right. Right. So using, you know, um, the sommelier chain, um, which, you know, you know, using Tenderman consensus has all the advantages of being faster and less expensive while still maintaining strong security. You know, those barriers to entry don't exist. Right. 
And with the Gravity Bridge, if you want to sell on somewhere like Ethereum, um, you know, on the most prestigious markets on Ethereum, you can still do that. You can mint right. on some LEA and access yep. Ethereum-based markets. There you go. There you go. Wow. Um, well, I want to, I, we should do this. We should do this quickly. This is exciting. And, and we're out of time. Um, uh, but Kevin, thank you for ending us on a note that uh, the opportunity space for sommelier um, is pretty broad in the NFT space. And um, thank you, Zaki. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Mario. Thank you, community. Um, you heard some new alpha here, um, NFTs on sommelier. Uh, a, a wonderful opportunity to, um, you know, attack some of the problems of uh, allowing quality uh, NFT and art sets to essentially find ways uh, to get onto the Ethereum chain and to be cheaply accessible. This is cool. Uh, until next week, we'll see you all. Um, again, join our community, community.sumilia.finance. Uh, check out our app, app.sumilia.finance. And, um, of course, our blog where we will have the recording of this transcript. Reach out to us if you want to partner up. Um, the community is growing and we depend on the community uh, to give us all of these new ideas. Please reach out, join our Telegram and our Discord. See everyone next week. Thank you. And thank you, Mario.